Are you nervous or flat out scared to start a strength training program because of your lower back? Hi, I'm Coach Dom, owner of Breakthrough Fitness, Oviedo, Florida. Today I'm going to teach you how to protect your lower back from getting injured with the most important strength training move of all, the hinge, or also known as the bending pattern. So you bend and pick things up all day long without much thought. It probably looks something like this, where you just bend over, grab something, tie your shoe, and move it around, um, which folds you over at your lower back. The problem is the lower back isn't designed to do heavy lifting. So now if you're in that just bent position here with that rounded lower back and you're picking something up of decent weight, you're putting your back in a very tough predicament. But you know what is strong that is designed to lift heavy things? Strong abs, strong back muscles, strong legs, and a strong ass. So if you want to live your best life and not always be worried about getting injured, you have to strengthen your body. One of the best ways to strengthen your body all at once is with the bending pattern. The proper way to bend and pick things up is to start the movement in the hips, not the lower back. I'll demonstrate quickly. So when you do this, when you learn to push the hips back and bend forward at the hips, your spine stays in a natural position. You'll see that natural lower back curve. It's not rounded forward. It's natural here. So when I'm in this position, the powerful glutes, hamstrings, and back muscles tend to do the heavy lifting. So when we're, when we're taught to use your legs to lift, you can't do a squat pattern and pick things up. But you can push the hips back and grab that item and pick it up. If you're getting something out of the trunk of the car, you're kind of in an awkward position. You can't really bend forward. So you can push those hips back, get everything nice and strong, engaged before you pick something up. The most common bending or hinging pattern is the deadlift. A deadlift is simply picking something up off the ground from a dead stop, hence the name. So I'm going to show you a few different methods that we do on teaching someone, introducing them to that bending pattern, that deadlifting pattern. Initially, what we'll do is start somebody here with their feet underneath them. You'll see I have my toes up on this uh, uh, additional mat that's on top of the ground. So it's lifting my toes up. What that's doing is reinforcing me to get my weight back on my heels. That's what we want to make sure we do on a deadlift. The weight is on the heel and midfoot. Because once we bend forward and if we pitch ourselves forward onto our toes, that is going to put a little more stress on the lower back than we want to. So we'll, we'll start off a person like this. We might have them put their hands here across their chest. Knees are softly bent. We don't lock them, but they're just, uh, just bent enough. And then from here, we have them learn to get back on those heels and bend forward by pushing back the hips, okay? So we learn to get them back on their heels. We even kind of make them wiggle around a little bit on the heels. And then they should feel that stretch right here, okay? And not here in the lower back when they're rounding. So we'll just have them practice this pattern. And if you're doing it correctly, you're gonna feel a stretch through the back of the legs into the glutes, and you might even feel those lower back muscles working, but they're, they're not uh, in a problem position, okay? Then from there, we'll go ahead and add some resistance to the exercise once they master it. So sometimes, depending on the client, we'll, uh, will shorten the range of motion. So if I have to pick something up off the ground, that's gonna be a little bit harder than if I have to pick something up off of this step, which is a little higher off the ground. So it's shortening the range of motion, which is making the exercise uh, a little bit easier. So from here, I'd be right over the, the implement that I'm using. We're using a kettlebell, for instance. I would push those hips back, bend the knees enough to grab that kettlebell. So you'll see my shoulders are down, my arms are going to be like steel rods. No bend in my arms. My weight's on my heels. Stomach's tight. I'm going to push the ground away from me and pull that weight off the ground. I'm going to push the hips back, return to the starting position. Okay. So you'll see there is knee bend. It's not a squat. It's not maximum knee bend. It's maximum hip bend first, enough knee bend and we lift. That is a traditional deadlift from a step. Now, we would progress them to the ground, and we would 
do the same pattern. So you'll see I have to bend a little more now to get that movement. <sighs> you'll see my back is bent forward a little bit, but it's not rounded. This, not good. This, really good. And I'm snapping those hips forward. We like to say bend, snap. Okay, and then we want to progress to different implements and tools. We can use a barbell. We can use what we call a trap bar or hex bar due to the shape of it where you're standing inside of it. Now the weight is distributed on the outside and you're able to grab those handles and it's the same pattern. Very friendly on the lower back opposed to a barbell that could, could uh, have a tendency to pitch you forward um, when you're doing that particular lift. So when we use a barbell, I'll, de I'll demonstrate what we call a straight leg deadlift, which was that initial pattern that I showed you how we teach people. So the weight's here, knees are soft. We hinge, that bar crosses my knees, that's as low as I can go, unless I round my lower back. And we don't want to round our lower back. So hinge back, snap it up. We like to call a deadlift a bang for your buck exercise because when we're lifting that weight off the ground, from the ankle to the, the trap muscle, the whole back, back of the body is being worked, the arms are being engaged, the midsection is being engaged, so we call it a bang for your buck exercise because uh, of the amount of muscle being used for that one exercise. Probably the best exercise you can learn, do it safely, you're going to protect that lower back, you're going to stay injury free and you're gonna build a great full body strength. I recommend you start by practicing that hinging pattern like I showed you. Do a set of 10 to 12 repetitions, bending slowly, snapping back up fast, rest about 45 seconds, maybe repeat two to three times like that. Once you have the, the form mastered and you're feeling it in the back of the legs and the hamstrings, lower back feels good, go ahead and add that uh, kettlebell or a dumbbell, whatever training implement you have, and practice. I'd go with a little lower uh, total repetitions and maybe do five sets of five to six repetitions with a minute in between. So you really learn the movement pattern. You don't build a lot of fatigue by doing 12 and 13 repetitions. So you do five to six, rest a minute, five to six, rest a minute. That's really going to uh, grease the groove, we like to say, and teach the movement pattern so you're doing it safely. So now you know how to properly bend. The most important uh, movement pattern you can do to build full body strength and protect that lower back. So if you like this tip and want more information about strength training, click the link below and download a copy of our ultimate guide to strength training. I'm Coach Dom. Keep moving.